been since 1994 when uh, Kevin Swantz won the British Grand Prix at Donington Park. In fact, between that period from 1978 to 1993, which was started by Kenny Roberts Sr. and went through uh, both the uh, Kevin Swantz's uh, closing that period by winning the title, of course, that was after Wayne Rainey's career-ending crash, we really had American dominance. But since then, we've had uh, the United States going winless. If Kenny Roberts wins this one, there would be a lot of firsts to celebrate. It would be the first Grand Prix win for Kenny after 59 starts. It would be the first win, as we said, for an American since Kevin Swanson Donington in 94. First win for a Suzuki since May 95. That was Daryl Beattie in Germany. Now, Robert's talent may have been hidden over the last two years because of the machine he was riding, but it was there. And Kenny has been one of the really big stories of this preseason. In fact, I think it's time we stop calling him junior. The question is, and the only question remaining is, can he keep the pace up over the entire distance? The other big news this year has been the John Kaczynski Irv Kanemoto story. Now, when Biaggi was lured away uh, to Yamaha, he took the Marlboro Millions with him, leaving Irv to scramble to keep the team together. But Irv did it. And John's career has certainly had its ups and downs. But today, John Kaczynski sits on the pole, the lone rider for Kanemoto, Mo uh, Kanemoto Racing. Now, can John keep his focus? He's going to have to put together a 21-lap masterpiece. That's what it's going to take to win today. Now, Randy Moore and Pitt Lane, any thoughts? Yeah, with the fact that uh, there's a second covering the first 10 riders, again, it's still going to be the race for the fittest. Okay, John Kaczynski on the pole position. Alongside him is Max Piaggi. Kenny Roberts Jr. comes to the start line very, very late indeed. And alongside him is Nobuatsu Aoki. So then, we have got a Honda on the pole. A Marbury Yamaha in second position. Two Suzukis on the front row. And then we got Repsol Honda. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good look start. Up, boy, look at that. Look at that. He's got a good start, but I don't think he's going to get the whole shot. I think, I think it may be Kenny Roberts Jr. Or oh, it is going to be Arbe. Arbe Jr. Kaczynski. Goes into the first corner. Now, this is a difficult bit. The left hand as Kaczynski leads into it. It's going to be all abreast. Check her out of the seat as they go through the left-hander. Michael Rutter coming through on the V-twin, but it is a Repsol Honda. I think there's a Repsol Honda in second position. I think it's Alex Crivier, Danny. I don't know which one it is with these new colors, but I think you're right. And there's Alex Crivier moving up alongside John Kaczynski, but he's not going to move into the lead. Kaczynski won't let him pass. Kaczynski, remember, on the big guy engine, Crivier on the screamer, as is everyone else except Borja on the Honda. There's only two Honda riders using the big guy motors. John, one of them. Okay, there looks like Yuko Kagiyama putting it up over the front of Michael Duren's Repsol Honda as they go through the second half of this track. So then we have Kruvite now leading from Kaczynski, from Roberts, from Arbe, from... That is, sorry, Michael Dern. I think it's Max there behind Michael Dern. And Checker, blinding start. It is Checker, blinding start. Checker was down on the fourth row of the grid. He's up behind Max. And there's John Kaczynski looking back up the inside again, and he takes it back from Alex Crivier. He runs a little bit wide. Oh, Crivier takes it back. So these two dicing on the first lap as if it were the last lap. John Kaczynski now coming under pressure from Kenny Roberts. He's trying to go around the outside. Arbe is there to pick up any pieces if anything goes down the road. So Crivier has it from Kaczynski, from Roberts, from Arbe, from Duran, from Max, from Checker. It's as quick as that. This is a little bit different racetrack than some of the racetracks we're accustomed to. There's a lot of room to overtake here. There's going to be a lot of opportunities on the brakes. Now, Alex Crivier, we mentioned the fact that although he's a very quiet guy, we didn't see too much or hear too much about him in practice. He's the guy who put up the most 207s on that dry practice. He didn't do the quickest lap, but he did the most fast laps. Oh, into this Alex. last corner. Wow. The Biaggi almost touching the rear wheel of Kenny Roberts on that Suzuki. Now we come out of that last corner, coming over start finish line for the first time. And the leader is going to be Alex Crivier. Look at those bikes. Mamma mia, as a and piece of paper gets out of the way, John it's going to be John. John Kaczynski back up the inside down. Looks to be in a good place to be able to take it up the inside of Alex. And these two trying to pull away. John a little bit wide there, snaps it back over. John always that very precise riding style. Sometimes running, sometimes it's not a left case, but sometimes runs a tighter line than the other 500 riders. He characteristically has done that. Michael Turn is actually down in 11th position. The reigning world champion out of the top 10.
Right then, we're halfway through lap two of 21 in Malaysia. Kaczynski just, but only just ahead of Spaniard, Alex Crivier. Then there is the number four bike of Carlos Checa. It's, uh, no, it's Max. It's Max Biaggi. It's number two bike of Max Biaggi. Uh, in third position, and then behind Max Biaggi, there is the leading Suzuki from the front row. It's now Kenny Roberts on that blue and white machine. Fifth, by the way, I think is Checker, but here comes Max. Well, I'm glad Max Trivia and Max Biaggi's going past both of them. We're well, looking to see if he made it. Did he, is, John, is John still upright? Yes. Oh, complete Horlicks of it he made. He's held John up, and now J Roberts now leads the race. So we've got Kenny Roberts now leading the race from Alex Crivier. Oh, Alex Crivier leading the race from Kenny Roberts. <laughs> John Kaczynski back in third place, and it's all upside down and backwards and forwards here in these first laps. And they're all very aware, you can be sure, they're all very aware that the big number one is not amongst them. And one of the reasons they really want to get the hammer down and go is because if Dewan has gotten a bad start and they haven't gotten any information they're good for yet, they want to make sure he doesn't get close. We're on board. Max. Passing John Kaczynski with Max Biaggi, and now we're on board with Biaggi, who tries to look up the outside of Kenny Roberts Jr. Biaggi in third place. John Kaczynski will be right there behind him. Coming across the start finish line now, that's the end of lap. We've got 19 to go. Crudier leads from Roberts, Biaggi, Kaczynski back and forth. And Nick Dewan, who's back in 10th place, has done the quickest lap, a 2.086. Dewan back in 10th. But going very quickly. Oh, Kenny geez. Roberts is going up the inside. It's throwing Alex Crudy in now. What a new look to this championship this year. Don't mind me not having any voice. You won't have them by the end of this <laughs> one, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> and now Alex Crivier is low, Max Biaggi now leads, but is he going to go deep again, but Junior, Roberts comes in back, almost clips Max Biaggi as they come through, and Roberts is now in the lead, wow, this is like one, two, five, this stuff, unbelievable, it's Randy Mamalu, I'll tell you what this is like, this is like 500 the way it used to be, proper 500, Randy Mamalu, never mind a one, two, five race, then expecting a good 500, this is a belter, I was trying to count the number of his last pipes <laughs> in the back of those bikes, thinking that there's only one of the way that they're chopping and changing positions right now. What a, a fantastic race, and we couldn't have asked for more. I, I know it sounds bad for Mick, but we couldn't have asked for more for Mick to be a little bit back there to try to gain that up. But look at the amount of riders that are still in contention. It's not just these two you see right now on our screen. There's a whole gaggle of them just behind. Look at that. It's just a follow through of light up. Well, Mick Dillon's done the quickest lap. We mentioned that at 2.086. He's back in 10th place, or he was the last time we saw him. Kenny Roberts Jr. opening up with just a little bit of a gap there. As you can see, through that part of the racetrack. One thing is, watch the speed of Max's bike. If they go back on board, the Yamaha has really made improvement this year uh, towards the Honda. Honda's always usually uh, on the top of the leaderboard when it comes to top speed, but lately it's been the Yamaha. Do you think that when we were on board with Max, as we are now, that he was pushing the front a moment ago through this corner? Or was he just late on the brakes? Just a little bit late on the brakes. Did you saw him going into the seat? He's doing it again. He's doing it again. Yeah. He's running wide again. Uh, you know, when he took the lead the very first time going into that really tight hairpin, the one that doubles back on itself, he just over, over it going in there. And he's lucky he didn't take anybody out with that. That's right. Max has been looking pretty hairy here. And John Kaczynski is going to try it up the inside. Can't do it yet. Not close enough. But Max has been sawing back and forth between these guys. Kenny Roberts back into the lead from Alex Crudier. Then Max Biaggi, who's really been all over the place and these opening laps. And John Kaczynski, the early leader in pole position, man who's back in fourth place in front of Warwick Abe. So then as we come back with Alex Crivier reversing it in to the, uh, the right-hander, Kenny Roberts Jr. has just set the fastest lap of the race so far on our first competitive few laps at the Sepang circuit on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. Kenny Roberts Jr. has now a lead of nearly half a second ahead of Alex Crivier's Reptile Honda. We are on board with probably Max. No, we're not. We're further back. I think we may well be on board with... Michael Dewan indeed, because that is Alex Barros ahead of us as we look at it. The number five machine with the Brazilian at the helm. Dewan is in that tenth position. He is being held up with his gaggle of riders. Now ahead of Barros there is 
Regis Le Coney, and then Tadio Carter, Carlos Checa, Ed Allen. The leading 10 are covered by 2.7 seconds. 2.7 seconds. These leading two are getting away a little. Roberts and Crevier are half a second split between them, but it could well be that Kenny Roberts has a little bit more time ahead of the Spaniard when we come over the start-finish line because it looks like the gap to third, Max Biaggi is... Oh, it's growing, he's pulling them. He is pulling Alex Crevier and Max Biaggi is almost struggling in that third place. John Kaczynski up out of the seat there at the back of the shot and he was passed by Norik Abbey. Kaczynski trying to go back inside of Abbey. But uh, John looking like he's struggling back there. The man who did... He's out! Kaczynski and Abbe! Kaczynski and Abbe are down. I saw Kaczynski reversing it into that left-hander. And I saw Abbe's red Yamaha go down. There he is. And I saw Kaczynski in the gravel as well. Oh, my goodness me. Trying a little bit too hard, too early. Who knows? But he was backing that thing in like turn one of Laguna, wasn't he, Dennis? Yeah, Abbe had just passed John. And here's John desolate walking away. That's the one thing he did not need today. And Abe, looking after John, wants to have a few words with him. Exactly. What a shame. Here we go. Here we go. Let's Reverse angle. There's first two. Here we go. Incoming from the right. Boy, oh, yo, yo. John down on the inside. Looked like he lost the front. Maybe on the brakes. Maybe as he tucked it in, he torpedoed Abe and Abe down. So... John Kaczynski takes out Abe here, and Roberts still leads from Crivier with Biaggi now in third. Dean picks up two places as a result of that to go to eight. What well, I'm whatever hitting at was Cheka, uh, that previous lap had picked up two positions. He'd gone by a, a couple of riders. Uh, Abe was one, and now as you can see him, he's tucked in right behind Max Biaggi right now. Let's see if those Yamaha guys can try to close up on these, uh, this here Honda and this here Suzuki. Well, I wouldn't call this a break in the action, but it's the first time we've been able to exhale. Uh, let's take a look at the tires that everyone's running. Now, Mick Dewan, Max Biaggi, Nabuatsu Aoki, and Kenny Roberts have all chosen the same hard Michelin front and soft Michelin rear. Dewan, Biaggi, Aoki, Roberts. Hard front, hard rear. Alex Crivier has chosen a hard front, but front, but he's gone to a medium rear. And John Kaczynski, well, he's out of the race now. He was on a medium front and a medium rear. Look at this lead that Kenny Roberts has got. That is uh, relatively enormous. That's a Roberts-like lead. <laughs> the thing is, when the, the camera's on Junior, he's not out of the seat. He's running really tight lines. But it seems to be everybody else. Except, you know, I saw Crudier going into that last corner when we saw the crash again, the replay of John Kaczynski and Norris Abbe. But uh, Crudier could not hold a similar line that Junior was doing. I look at Junior just opening this gap up. 1.5 seconds, it was 0.3 the last time they came over the start finish line. 1.5 seconds is the lead of Roberts over Crivier. Max Biaggi is another one second back of Alex Crivier. And Carlos Checa is another tenth back of his teammate Max Biaggi. Where is Michael doing? He's in six. Looking smooth, looking steady, looking very much in control in what has been so far a pretty helter-skelter helter race. Kenny Roberts, lapping in 2074, starting to pull away. Carlos Cech has come all the way from the fourth row of the grid, and he's in front now. He's in front of Max. Oh, Max Biaggi. One thing I, well, Max Biaggi. One thing our viewers didn't get to see was this morning's warm-up, and... I'm sure you guys saw it, the, the fact that Junior was out there with Michael Dewan for a num number of laps. Dewan was ahead of Junior, Junior passed Dewan, and they pretty much stayed together. And those two guys were the first and second, Dewan being the first, uh, Junior being the second uh, in uh, the, this morning's warm-up. But Junior, again, looked really smooth, and the Suzuki was working fantastically, especially out of the low gear corners. I noticed he was being able to pull the Honda of uh, Michael Dewan. Now remember that as we look at these two Marbury Yamahas, that this is uh, the team that was essentially run by Wayne Rainey last year. A lot of the Wayne Rainey mechanics are still in the newly formed Yamaha racing team with the new sponsorship as we see Carlos Checa sliding a little and Max Biaggi getting out of the seat a little. So uh, the culmination of work that uh, Yamaha have been doing is coming to the fore as Max Biaggi oh. finds it up on the inside. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Too wide, Max. goes wide, and, and 
check it back to him, yes, and I can just imagine Wayne sitting there in the living room gritting his teeth and saying, be careful, Carlos. I can't believe the amount of mistakes so far Max has made. And Carlos looking really good at catching up to Alex Studio right now. The gap is closing, and he's got his sights set on the, uh, the fellow Spaniard, fellow countrymen. And meanwhile, while the two Spaniards are closing up on the grid, Kenny Roberts has done a 2074, so he is starting to pull away. He's got a 2.5 second lead. Now, Kenny Roberts led a race once before, and here we're going to see again as Biagi up on the inside, already with the bike crossed up and out of control. Lucky that he doesn't snap back on him. Cheka lets him through, because if he doesn't let him through, they're both going down. But Cheka is going to dive to the inside, and as Biagi runs in too hot, Cheka just powers it back past him down on the inside. What, what that corner doesn't show you, from, if it is a different angle, the angle of the riders as you enter that corner, it's a very difficult corner to judge depth perception because it's very flat, and the distance from the inside of the racetrack to the guardrails a long, long way, and it's, it's, the brake markers are actually on the left-hand side and the left-hand side of the grandstand, and you can't really see exactly where to hit the brakes, and if you miss it just by a little bit at doing 265, 270 kilometers an hour, it'll put you offline like it just showed Max. Kenny Roberts is going to win this. I've written it down on a piece of paper. Well, I'm not going to win here, just so we don't jinx him. All right, then. There's, a, there's a 15 laps to go. Kenny Roberts Jr., as I was saying, led at uh, Kenny Roberts. i got to stop saying Junior. We can say Kenny Roberts Sr. Uh, uh, Kenny led at the uh, British Grand Prix in Donington early, about six laps, but then... Oh, Crevier! goes deep, sorry Danny. Oh, that's all right. And uh, yeah, Checker goes up into second. Checker's up into second place. And Carlos Checker, the guy who was all over the place in practice, starting out with a huge crash, uh, is now just looking cool as a cucumber. And now it looks like he's going to move up past Alex Crivier into second place. And we'll see what he can do with some empty red thing. Or did he run right as well? He did. Well, Randy, as you were saying, a lot of guys getting it wrong on the brakes. Meanwhile, not getting anything wrong, not putting a wheel wrong, Kenny Roberts running up front and continuing to knock the fastest lap record down again and again. Check up the inside of Crivier this time. Let's see if he can make it stick. Those two running very close together. They're going to be swapping paid here in a minute. And Biagi desperately trying to go with his teammate. And this is not the way Biagi imagined this race taking place. I don't think many people imagined it this way unless they were Spanish. I'm half Spanish. <laughs> Roberts from Crivier, Cheka, Biagi in fourth. And now Biagi nudges up the inside of Alex Crivier, and this time doesn't run wide, sets out after Cheka, and we're going to keep our eye on the lap times because Cheka hasn't had a lap yet when he's got clean road in front of him. So we'll see what he can do, but that blue speck disappearing off into the distance is Kenny Roberts. There he is now. Alex Crivier loses two places within the space of three or four corners. So, talk about turning the tables. Repsol Honda so dominant, and in this race so far, we've got a Suzuki leading and two Marble Yamahas in second position in the shape of Max Biaggi. Sorry, Carlos Checker in second and Max Biaggi in third. Crivier is keeping in touch with third position man Max Biaggi. The gap ahead of Carlos Checker to Kenny Roberts is 3.8 seconds. 3.8 seconds. He's gone deep again but he's managed to get the power on early. Behind Alex Crivier is Taddy Okada. Behind Okada is number one. He's in sixth place. It's Michael Dern. In seventh is Barros. As we see Max come up into second position, Biaggi up into second, but does he go wide again? I think he did. And no, no, he's kept it. He's kept it down the back straight. And as they weave, coming into this final corner to complete lap eight, Crivier looking up on the uh -oh. inside as well, and he might be able to pick off at least one place as he's inside Biagi, but not able to gain in as Biagi leans on him. They must have touched. Kenny Roberts across the start-finish line now, 8 of 21 running. We'll see the gap as he goes five. across. Five seconds he's pulled over Cheka, and it's not working badly for Roberts either, but these three are battling back there, hammering and tongs, and probably slowing each other up because they're doing 208s. Roberts out on his own, putting together 207s. 2074, 2075, he's done a 2077. What a race. Let's not forget Kenny Roberts in the lead. He's now leading from 3.8 to now 5 seconds.
This is the battle for second, third and fourth position, but Okada in fifth is reeling them in to the tune of 1.2 seconds per lap. Okada is going to be in this ball game. Here is number one, Michael Dern, in sixth position. He's running 208.3s. That's the best lap time that he has done. So therefore, he's running 0.6 of a second slower than the current leader, Kenny Roberts, on the Suzuki. There you see Roberts with a rather doing with uh, Alex Battles behind him, and there's the gap. It is eight seconds separating the leader from the five times world champion, the leader Kenny Roberts, from Mick Dewan. Roberts looking so smooth. And that Suzuki finally coming good after some very difficult years. We've got 13 laps to go. A lot can happen. But Roberts leading here, dominant, looking comfortable, really just checking out. Not only are we checking out the progress of Kenny Roberts' his lead at five seconds, but of course, remember that his father is here running the Medina squad. Jean-Michel Bale is in 13th position, and uh, new rider Mike Hale is a little bit further back. He's back in 23rd. But, uh, well, there's going to be two teams celebrating if, if it all comes together. Crivier is yeah, inside of Biagi, and this time he keeps it down tight. So there's not to let Biagi back under him again. Crivier loses the power of that Honda down the straight, runs up the back of the Yamaha, but these Yamahas this year are looking pretty good, at least on these straightaways. Alex Crivier chasing Carlos Checa, the two Spanish riders in front of the Italian, and the American leads the Malaysian Grand Prix. Okay, leading twin, last we look at these four-cylinder machines, the leading twin is that of Sete Jibba now, Max Biaggi gets it all wrong again, and Crivier holds his third position, we're on board with Max Biaggi. I'm trying to remember what you British say about someone making a dog's breakfast in these corners. Making a dog's dinner. A dog's dinner, dog's breakfast. Breakfast, yeah. yeah. My dog gets up early. Anyway, <laughs> Max Biaggi certainly looking rough out here today. Looking like he's got a lot of pressure on himself. Tries to force the bike to do something that maybe the bike doesn't want to do. Is this track physically taxing over 21 laps, Randy? Is it going to be playing its part as we progress in this race? Yeah, for sure. The one, the one that has to keep his concentration, of course, is Kenny Roberts Jr. It's easy for the other guys, you know, pacing themselves with, with who's in front of them on what's going on. But with Kenny Roberts Jr., he's been, again, looking really strong in pre-season testing. Suzuki's done the most work, I know, as far as days of testing. Uh, at this, before Jr. started his uh, testing in the beginning of the season, he said, man, we've got way too many tests. But I think these tests are paying off. I'm standing in the Suzuki garage, and Gary Taylor says, I need a pit bug right now that says, please, Gary, please. <laughs> Well, Randy, you've been in that position sometimes with a big lead. I remember in Belgium, uh, when you won your first one, says Biaggi looks up the inside, is not able to make it. But, I mean, do you have a problem when you're in a big lead like that in the Grand Prix just trying to keep your concentration? The one thing that you do is what Jimmy is doing right now as he goes by me is lead that board. Plus five, Cheka. Uh, lap time, 07.7. Lap 11. That's the only thing that he's got to work on. And, and, and he knows how hard he's braking. He knows how hard he's pushing those foot brakes and pushing the handlebars to make that bike turn to do those lap times. And man, if he keeps on opening that gap, it's like a, a slow but surely progressive grin starts to come on your face. Well, there are a lot of slow progressive grins appearing on a lot of faces. At least in the American camp today. And the Suzuki camp for sure. But we've got ourselves a real battle here in the Spanish camp for second place between Alex Crivier and Carlos. Biaggi, yeah. Biaggi, uh -huh. I thought he'd gone missing. I'm sure it's Max Biaggi, guys. It is. Biaggi's pulling out. Well, we saw Biaggi slow there, and uh, very unusual for a factory machine. It's been a long time since I've seen a factory machine pull out. Certainly has. Obviously a uh, major problem, and of course, the last time that we saw a Yamaha break like that when he was up there was good old Luca Catalora in Harama. And that was a uh, that was a terrible, terrible blow in a uh, in a in a race-winning position. Even though the brake lever was coming back to the bar, Randy. Yeah, just as you say that, I see 
the Muzz team being pushed down into their garage, both riders, Sandy Goldberg and Luca Catalora. Uh, Dennis, do you remember the last race? Uh, I mean, the first race was last year in Japan when Max won it. Do you remember Michael Dewey's bike broke, that Honda broke? That's right. It's kind of ironic, this is the first race and Max's bike is broke. And it was a little bit similar with Max Biaggi doing what Kenny Roberts is doing today, taking advantage of everything but clearing off and making no mistakes. Roberts is still doing 207 sixes, and that means that he's pulling out. Well, he pulled out seven tenths of a second on the last lap. And he's doing it comfortably. Again, he's not out of the seat from where they get to see him on the screen. I I'm standing here, and I see him coming down the straightaway right now. And those guys are just exiting the last corner. He's just going by me, and I'm in front of the pit of the Suzuki garage, watching him going into turn one. Again, when things click, uh, you know, I told Junior, uh, to set his sights, of course, on Mick Dillon because he's five times world champion. And if you fell a little bit short of that, you'd end up in the top three. <laughs> I think he didn't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've that fastest lap from Kenny Roberts Jr. with a 207.5. That therefore means that he's extended his lead by another six tenths of a second. It's gone from 3.8 to 5 to 5.3 to 6, dead to 6.6. Six. Jr. leads on lap 12 of 21 in Malaysia. Well, back live as Mick Dillon will catch a glimpse of him, continues to run in fifth place, but Kenny Roberts leading from Carlos Checa and Alex Crivier, and we are on board with Crivier looking forward toward Carlos Checa. Checa's first ride on the Marlboro Yamaha. Well, we've had drama today. We had John Kaczynski make a mistake on the brakes and take out Norik Abe during the early phases of the race. And then we had Max Biaggi in his debut on the works Marlboro Yamaha retire with some kind of an engine problem. We don't know what, but definitely something went wrong with the bike. And Crivier dives through on the inside. Let's see if he made it. He did, but like everyone's been doing today, he's he, no, he runs too wide and isn't able to move back across and get the right line. So Cheka uh, looking pretty smooth. Crivier getting a little desperate back there as he tries to find a way and lost some ground. Now we're keeping our eye on uh, we're keeping our, our eye on the gap with Nick Dillon, but he's not making much progress uh, doing losing ground rather than picking it up. He's 10 seconds back of Roberts now, so it looks like Nick is going to be in fifth, and right. he's got balls behind him. Yeah, right now I'm in the uh, Kenemoto uh, Racing Garage with John Kazuki. John, can you tell us what happened going into that last corner? Uh, actually, it, it started a few, few laps before where Max Max was, seen, was very erratic and running wide and, and running way outside and, and uh, unfortunately this time I was passing um, Abraham and uh, Max slowed up tremendously and it was a situation where I didn't want to hit Max and I was trying not to, to hit Abe but unfortunately I went down trying to keep from hitting anybody, but clearly, you know, it was my mistake, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I must, I'm for sure I apologize to, to Abraham because, you know, this is never I would do something like this intentionally, uh, but I'm, luckily he's okay, and we have to come back for Japan. And you're okay physically? Yeah, everything is okay, just, you know, I made a mistake, and what can you do? You just have to pack it in and go to the next one. Takes a man to admit it. Hey, you know, it's, it's no problem for me. It, it was something that I wish wouldn't happen, and I feel terrible for Irv and all the mechanics, but, you know, that he knows I was trying and trying to do my best, so things happen. All right, John, thanks. Good luck in Japan. Just hearing Randy Lamola speaking to John Kaczynski, and, of course, John putting the Kanemoto Racing Honda on the pole, but disappointment today as he crashes out, taking Abe with him. Well, no disappointment so far at the front of the pack as number 10, Kenny Roberts has extended that lead to a gigantic, I would say Roberts-esque or Rainey-esque uh, 7.3 second lead, uh, pulling away from Carlos Checa. Alex Crivier hanging on, he's right there. You can see that number three machine chasing the number four, the two Spanish riders. And Okada, he's been all day just out of reach of these two guys, so close and yet so far. And behind him, Nick Dillon, uh, who has picked up the pace just a little bit. He was two-tenths of a second quicker 
No, he wasn't. He's being caught by Balos by two tenths of a second. So Dewan has got a battle on his hands with Alex Balos, although he has pulled now. He's, he's okay. He's pulled a... What's the gap there? Lost myself. What? Oh, point six. Well, he's not okay. He's got pressure from Balos. Balos always real good on the brakes. Okay, we come around to complete lap 14 of 21. Kenny Roberts' his lead was 7.3, and as you can see, it's now 8.1 seconds. And Alex Cruvier jinx to his right-hand side. Keep it neat on the brakes. Is he going to go deep? Can Carlos Checker have a chance to then look up on the inside through turn two, which is a left-hander? No, he doesn't. But he cautiously looks over his shoulder, and I'm afraid, Alex, you are now the meat in a Repsol Sarni. Oh, through up the inside. Oh, nice stuff. Cruvier had no idea where that was coming from. And I think got him on the um, short top. Yeah, Checker has just been blasting past people all day. Now, Cruvier blasts past him, but uh, there's been some real good bison going on between these two. And Checker goes back past him again. I can imagine viewers back in Spain must be going nuts. And now Okada's up there. Okada from four in fourth position. You just saw a quick glimpse of Michael Duran behind, but Duran's 2.7 back of Okada. Well, Okada's there at 2.079. If these two guys keep sawing each other up and taking each other's line, pinching each other's line, that's going to let Okada do what he wasn't able to do when they were sort of pulling away from him. Now he's closed right up. Again, Crivier up the inside. And it's Okada now who wants to get in there. Woo! Close stuff. Crivier that. looks like he's got the power on, but it's Checker around the outside. Checker just kept it open on the wide line, and Crivier on the not ideal line, trying to go on the brakes, ends up losing on the way out, and Okada hangs off there as that thing gets into a bad case of the golly wobbles. And now Crivier hanging up on me off the inside. Carlos Checker, he was spinning that thing up quite early in today's race. Now, Crivier's got a lot of corner speed. Had to scrub it off a little through there. Now he's on the back straight. Here is a good example of Yamaha power compared with Honda power. And who's going to win the race? Well, Kenny Roberts going to win the race. Yeah, but who's going to win the power race? Whoa, Crivier! All over the shop. Does that give O'Connor a chance to come yes, through? Yes, it does. I think that it may. Kenny Roberts is still leading this race out of shot. And look who's coming into shot behind him. Uh, Mick Dewan and Alex Ballas. Hey, Dewan's now going to 2079. These guys carving each other up. Mick Dewan's put his head down now. He's going to 2079. Randy, what are you thinking of this? There's a good possibility of him closing up, but I can see him breaking really deep and getting that bike moving around, going into turn runs and went by So they support for Max Biaggi. The bike just quit, just like it ran out of gas, so to speak, so they don't know if it's electronic or whatever. Of course, the bike's still out there on the racetrack. I asked Mike Sinclair, what was the problem during the race? Was there a braking problem or whatever? Because Max looks a little bit out of uh, proportion to what he normally looks like, very smooth and fast. And uh, he just said to Mike Sinclair that he knew that he couldn't stay with Junior, and he felt that second place would have been good enough, and that's what he was aiming for, and the bike quit. There were a lot of other guys who wanted that second place. Uh, it's not finished yet, because now Okada is up into third, chasing Carlos Checa, number four, Marbury Yamaha. So then, Robert still leads by 8.8 .8 seconds ahead of Carlos Checa on screen. So whilst we see this battle for second, third, and fourth, Duran in fifth, Barros in sixth, very close to Duran. Seventh is Laconi, Red Bull Yamaha. Eighth is Borja, Movie Star Honda. Ninth is the leading twin in the shape, shape of Sete Jibber now. Tenth is Nobuatsu Aoki from the outside of the front row. Eleventh is Yukio Kagiyama, wildcard Suzuki. Twelfth is Tetsuya Horada on the Aprilia V twin. There's the lonesome Roberts. Thirteenth is Jean-Michel Bale on the triple. Fourteenth is Harajika Aoki up from 250 on the SEC Technical Sports Honda V Twin. Fifteenth is Simon Crayfar. Sixteenth, Jim Bear. Seventeenth, Marcus Obey. Eighteenth, Mike Hale. And we've got Michael Rutter in nineteenth spot. He's just been lapped. Well, in this battle, Carlos Checker, the man who looks like he's made the least mistakes during the day. And there's the board out for a card of low plus nothing. Meaning exactly that. Look out. Here comes Alex Crivier on the inside. That's what plus nothing looks like. You just got passed on the brakes, 
as Crivier, who's made more mistakes today than Shaka, trying to put his head down and do something about going after Carlos. Nick Dewan is back in fifth place at 207.4, so the pace picking up. As doing a 207.4, Bottas dropping back a little bit from him, but Crivier picking up the pace as he tries to get back in contact with Carlos Check again. Wow, what a battle for second, third, and fourth, and perhaps uh, Dewan's going to join that. But meanwhile, back at the front, do you believe it? We're getting up into double figures. It's a nine-second lead now. Roberts 207.8 is leading by nine seconds from Checa with Okada and Crivier. Michael Dewan is handing down that second pack of Checa, Okada and Crivier. He's two seconds back of Alex Crivier, but he's circulating half a second quicker. There is Kenny Roberts' girlfriend on the right-hand side row. There's uh, Gary Taylor on the extreme left-hand side. You just saw a quick glimpse of him. And, well, what a result so far from the Eden Bridge crew. Yeah. Andy Mamola. We had a lesson in Suzuki guys who are on the floor with heart starters. <laughs> trying to jump out their heart right now. What a turn about of form. Well, well, well. Many people have been saying that this is a latent talent. He's got motorcycle racing in the blood. Another father and son combination, as we have seen with the likes of Valentino Rossi. Put him on the right bike, and he just goes into the distance. This is only round one of the year, as we see Gary Taylor in the middle, counting off those laps. It must seem like an eternity out there, watching on the, pit, on, uh, on the television screens down there in the pits, and of course, it's confounded by the fact that it's a long lap. Yeah, it must have, it's been some frustrating years for Suzuki, as Roberts comes across the line with a 2.078. He's just able to lap in the 2.07s at ease. His lead, but Czech has closed a little bit. Uh, Czech has done a 2.076. Of course, Czech is not is not pushing to catch Roberts, he's pushing to get away from Crivier and, and Okada. Yeah, and Dewan's just done a 2073, so he's definitely trying to close up on this gap, and there's a possibility he could get on that lap in the four laps to go. Sure is. Dewan doing his personal best lap of the race. He took a second off that Okada's Okada fourth place, and now, well, well, we're in the same shot. Yeah, there's Dewan coming up on them. They're closing on them now, and as Randy said, doing the 2073 on the last lap, and that uh, that is enough to take a half second off of Okada. He's pulling himself right up there. Looking at it from Suzuki's point of view, uh, Toby and Randy, just imagine you take Kenny Roberts out of the equation, and where's Suzuki? They're back in ninth place, and that's the way it's been these last few years. They've had confidence in the machine, but they've just not had the experienced rider. And, you know, in all fairness, maybe Kenny wouldn't have been the experienced rider a couple of years ago. Two years on the Medina, he learned a lot. And now, putting it to very good use on the four-cylinder factory Suzuki. The one, the one thing, that, the other thing there, Dennis and Toby, that Kenny Roberts Jr. has done this year, He's slimmed down a bit. He's, he's really been working hard with his trainer, Dean Miller, over the winter time. And again, once again, I repeat, that Suzuki's done the most testing with Kenny Roberts Jr. and Navarro Aoki and uh, Kageyama. And it's paying off, uh, especially for Junior. He, he also lives by this new book that you've got to eat right. And uh, he's really put it down to, to the test. And, and it's Sean. He's the only man that's been able to go into the 207 to remain there. But everybody else keeps going back and forth to a 7 back up to the 208. Did he just put his head down and just left? Well, that's right. When we started the broadcast, we were talking about how Roberts has been good in preseason testing all year. And there's Dewan looking up the inside now and picking up a place from Okada. That'll move Dewan up into fourth place. And Nick Dewan just may put it on the uh, on the box today. And I think Kenny would like that, having Nick up there with him. <laughs> Look at the fastest lap of the race, 2072 by Nick Dewan. Whoa. 2072. So, Dewan now with an opportunity. He's going to take advantage of it. Obviously, the bike's not right today. Something's not right. But Nick Dewan's thinking of the points, and he's thinking of the championship, and he is on the limit as that bike is getting squirrely. And you can see him going through turn one, really trying to get a grip with this. He knows that Alex City is in good condition. He's going to be a bit more difficult to pass than Tadayuki Okada. And the thing that he will use against Alex Crivier is that Crivier won't expect somebody from like doing steaming pass because he thinks he thinks that he's going to be Okada coming through.
Right then, we have got two and a half laps to go. 3.4 miles each time they go around this Sepang track. We're looking at number four, red and white. Marlborough Yamaha of Carlos Checker, he's in second position. Then we've got number three, Alex Crivier in third. But it's that orange number one of Michael Dern who shrugs himself behind the bubble as much as he can and then leans it into the left-hander. Slow corner this, building up speed. That's the point where we saw Max Piaggi fall on a cooling down lap yesterday morning. The rear wheel just got onto the curb. It spun up and out the back of the front door that he went. Fortunately, he was OK. Max Piaggi, if you're wondering where he is, he is retired from the race with a problem with a motorcycle. Just quit, just stopped, just like that, for no apparent reason. This is how you can see that Michael Dewan has reeled in Carlos Checker uh, in second position. And that is the gap on screen. Number four, Checker. Number three, Crivier. Number one, Dewan. Number eight, Taddy Okada. Robert still leads. Well, we'll be interested to see what the lap times are as they come around again. It does look like Dewan is coming yet closer to these two. Checker has never been more than a couple of bike links away from Crivier all day. Roberts goes across the line. Now, Roberts is let off a little bit. He's done a 209. And, of course, he's just going to count these last two laps down. But uh, Crivier's done his personal quickest, a 2073, and that's good enough to take four tenths of a second back from Nick Dean as Crivier is now going to put the rush on Carlos Checker. He's all over the back of Carlos Checker. This is the battle for the front pages in Spain, I think, even though it's second place in the race. The last time these two guys were in a situation like that was for the lead at Harama. Checker was being very steady. Crivier got a little desperate and made the mistake. He's over at the end of the straight. Yeah, one thing that uh, made him go a little bit harder, I believe, is I'm sure his last time, the last lap showed Dewan closing. Uh, and that's, you know, Alex Sidney knowing well that uh, Dewan can uh, easily get by him. So they're picking up the pace and now trying to get past Shekka in a much more anxious mood. Yeah, Alex Crudier has felt the hot breath of the champion on his neck many times, and uh, Carlos Checker is now feeling the hot breath of Alex Crudier. But Checker's really, uh, he's really looked very steady today. You know, last night I went into the gym in our hotel to, uh, to run on the treadmill, and there was Carlos Checker on the bicycle, the stationary bicycle, for more than an hour doing sit-ups afterwards and so on. Still preparing himself for today's race. This is last night, so uh, looks like, I don't know who you're on, someone... Well, I don't know, what, that must have been, a, I don't know, I lost it. Anyway, Kenny Roberts Jr. back in the lead as the uh, producer is trying to fake me out here. Uh, I hope it's not Jr., that, that's all. The one, yeah. No, 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 it, Roberts Jr. was okay. Okay. No, the one thing that I'm seeing now is you can see the back end squirming quite a bit on uh, Alex Pouvier's uh, Alex bike in comparison to the drive that Carlos Check is getting. And if Carlos Check can keep, keep getting that bike out, he's going to hold on to that second place. But this man right here, He's got one lap to go, one lap and one corner to go. There is the gap back to second position. It looks like Dewan has, uh, uh, has got a, he's just sort of stopped the barrage that he was giving Alex Crivier a few laps ago. Now it's do or die to get onto the last step of the podium. But Dewan doesn't want to do anything silly. He doesn't want to throw uh, 13 points away for fourth position. And Carlos Checker is in second for 20 po points. He uh, Alex Crivier behind him for 16 points. Roberts' lead is 6.8 seconds. It went up to 9 seconds on lap 16. It started very, very slowly, but he soon built a gap. And he's going to be going for the win in the last few miles. Last lap here in Malaysia, Kenny Roberts on the Suzuki leads by 6.9 seconds as he is ahead of this guy here, the Marlboro Yamaha of Spaniard, Carlos Checker, an American leads a Spaniard from a Spaniard, a Suzuki leads a Yamaha from a Repsol Honda. Well, 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 who would have believed the complete turnabout of form over the closed season period by the British Suzuki team. They have uh, done it all of that hard work, and now Repsol Hondas are third, fourth, and fifth. Dennis, an American lead, and you are an American. Whew, and as we watch this battle for second place, we're imagining Kenny Roberts up front on that blue machine, and I'm thinking that it's been 16 years since a guy named Kenny Roberts won a race. That was back in Imola 
1983 when Roberts won the last race he rode. I'm talking about Kenny Sr., but here is Kenny Roberts, the guy we used to call Junior, and he's going to bring this number 10 home with his first victory in a Grand Prix on his first ride in a work Suzuki. Kenny Roberts, of course, is here today. Okay, he just, head, he just can't believe it, Toby. And um, Kenny Roberts Sr. is down there in the Medina's pit. He will be shaking his head as well. Last corner. Kenny Roberts Jr. tips it in. He's got just to bring it out of this corner, accelerate. He's going to see that finish line, that checkered flag. He's been working so long. This is 60th Grand Prix, and he's going to bring it home. Victory for Kenny Roberts. And looking back into second place, it is Carlos Checker who's going to come through there. Mick Dillon does not make third from Alex Crivier. So Kenny Roberts Jr. saw him shake his head, and I called him Jr. He just couldn't believe it. Now, well, Kenny Roberts won the race. It's kind of ironic. I got his dad standing right here. Kenny must be over the exhibit, and of course, he, uh, he's left your team. He went to Suzuki. He's just done a fantastic job. I'm glad to see. Well, I always knew he was there. But, uh, no, it's his day, that's for sure, and uh, he showed everybody they could ride a 500. Probably a lot of people eating shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll translate that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, there's a lot of American people uh, back in the States, and uh, I, I can tell you, standing in the pit lane, as Junior came by holding his head, the whole pit wall was clapping and applauding the fact that this young man just won his first Grand Prix. And, and there's nothing like it when you do win your first Grand Prix, and it's that far ahead of you going, well, why didn't this come sooner? You're the man! You're the man. Kenny has got the banners from Suzuki already. What the result for Kenny Roberts, but the effort that has been put in by Team Suzuki is enormous. Lauren Willing has joined the team. It has come to fruition with 25 points for Gary Taylor's squad. What a result. We'll be speaking...